Welcome to chapter 17 where we'll continue our study of community structure by looking at species interactions. During this chapter we'll be looking at the complexity of food webs in communities and then look at how one species can affect a competitor through a third spe by reducing the number of or increasing the number of a third species. It's called indirect interactions. And you've probably heard that it's important to preserve all species in order to maintain the integrity of an ecosystem. But we'll find out in this chapter that there are certain species called keystone species that have a much greater impact on the community than other species. And at the end of the chapter, we'll see how some of those keystone species actually make their impact through mutualistic relationships. Our chapter opens up with a quick look at the studies that were done by Weinmiller in 1990 on fish interactions, trophic interactions, or feeding in the Orinoco River in Venezuela and also in Costa Rica and looking at the the simplest of those communities we can see in figure 17.3 that these interactions are incredibly complex and hard to understand. Robert Payne's work in 1980 suggested that maybe we could understand these feeding relationships by looking at what he called the strong interactions. And those would be the most influential feeding relationships or trophic relationships. And Schertke in 1992 picked up on this in his study of the wetland reed and broke this food web down into the, the strong and weak and weakest interactions and developed an understanding of the, the parts of this that would be most beneficial to monitor or to understand. In this way, researchers are able to effectively work with food webs without getting bogged down in the incredible detail. As resource managers study food webs and these interactions between species, it's important for them to understand the wide variety of ways that these interactions occur. And one thing that's not immediately obvious are the indirect interactions. And we'll look at an example of that in chapter 18 with trophic cascades. But in this chapter, we'll be looking at indirect commensalism and apparent competition. It's hard to imagine that beavers would have an impact on the abundance of beetles in an area, but a study by Martinson et al. in 1998 clearly showed that the beavers, by cutting down the cottonwood trees in an area, were increasing the density of stump sprouts, which is a preferred food of the beetles, and allowed their population to grow faster than it otherwise would. So if the beetles turned out to be a pest in that area, they could reduce the beetle population by moving the beavers to another location. Apparent competition is an interesting interaction where one species might actually uh, appear to be competing against another, but really there's a third one involved. And this was shown very nicely by a study by Ora et al. in 2008 with an ev evaluation of the apparent competition between the black mustard plant and bunch grass. And what they found in this study was that the um, small rodent was actually the one that was causing the reduction of the bunch grass as it was hiding in the stands of the invasive black mustard plant and then going out from that sheltered location and feeding on the native bunch grass. So there really wasn't an actual competition between the the two plants. And this was shown in an exclosure study where the uh, 
rodents were kept out of the area and the bunch grass wasn't reduced in the presence of the black mustard plants. In the latter part of the 1960s, Robert Payne developed the idea of the keystone species, indicating that there are a few species in the food web that have a greater impact on the overall community than the others. And he looked at the species in the intertidal zone and saw that in a tropical environment where there were more predators, there were a greater number of species in the community than in the temperate food web where there were fewer predator species. And what he also found was by removing the sea star pisaster that he was able to reduce the number of species in the community rather dramatically, thus demonstrating that the keystone species is indeed the key to diversity in many communities. And again, this becomes very important for resource managers to understand what those keystone species are so that as they work with natural systems, they can make sure that those particular species are preserved in that system. Another interesting keystone species interaction is one that occurs in the river environment which power investigated in California and here we have if you take a look at figure 17.14 on page 390 a steelhead which feeds on predatory insects and uh, roach fry, which are small fish, and stickleback fry, which again is another small fish, all of which feed on these algae-eating chironomids. So if the keystone predator, the steelhead, is removed from the system, then the predatory insects and the roach fry and the stickleback would be feeding on those chironomids much more effectively and that population would go down resulting in a dramatic increase of the algae. So the presence of the steelhead in the system maintains the diversity of the intermediate predators and thus controls the growth of the algae to some extent. Under the category of mutualistic keystones your book provides two examples. One is the seed dispersing uh, ants. I'd like to focus on the cleaner fish in the coral reef since that's one of the research areas that we are involved in here at WLC. I've seen a number of cleaning stations along the reef where the cleaner wrasse come out and clean off the parasites from inside the mouth and the gills and the, and the outside of just about every species of fish in the area. And as it turns out, this activity is absolutely critical to the health and well-being of the various species in the reef. As those fish species move from their daytime to nighttime uh, areas on the reef, they stop at, at a cleaning station just like we stop at a gas station in order to, uh, to get fuel. They stop at a cleaning station in order to get cleaned off so that the parasites won't overwhelm them. In studies where they've removed the cleaner fish from an area, they found that the health of the other fish species was dramatically impacted. So this becomes a keystone uh, member of the coral reef community. So in this chapter we've seen that the interaction between animals in a community can be very very complex as we saw in the feeding relationship in the Orinoco River. And we found that some species are able to interact with each other through a third party called indirect interactions. But the big thing from this chapter that we've learned about is the concept of keystone species. 
and this is key in resource management to understand that there are particular species that have a much greater impact on the community than others and in some cases these might be mutualistic types of interactions so resource managers really need to take this into consideration mm -hmm.